Hey there! Today we're going to talk about a scientific ink. It is Albert Einstein by Montblanc. Uh, this was uh, graciously donated to us by Appelbaum Pennen, um, which is a, a fountain pen store in the Netherlands. And we will be giving this ink away at some point, so keep your eyes peeled if you want to win it. Uh, I think this has a wonderful little box. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you can see the, the stars on there. Uh, I think that's very cool. I think this ink is supposed to have some type of metallic particles in there to give it a sheen of, of some kind. Uh, I, well, just just check out the writing sample I'll do later and, and see for yourself uh, how that works out. Um, it doesn't say anything about having to clean your pen extra well. Uh, the, um, the Mont Blanc, what's it called, Midnight Blue does come with such a warning. I've covered that for Encyclopedia. That's an Iron Gall ink. Uh, this apparently is not. Um, it comes in this fancy little bottle. I think it looks very nice. It has the, the Mont Blanc white star or snowflake, or you like to call that, uh, on the bottle. Um, I think it's cool. It is a dark gray, a very dark gray, uh, although it does actually have some nice shading. Uh, it, it responds well. I, I found it, it flows well. Um, I didn't really have any issues with the ink. So, it's a fascinating ink. Um, and I think the best thing I can do is just show you a writing sample. So that's what I'll do next. And um, I hope this is going to be useful. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, there we go. With... Mont Blanc... Oh, I shouldn't say the K, someone told me. Mont Blanc. That makes sense from a French perspective. Albert Einstein. <clears throat> Let's start with some fine writing. The quick brown fox hits the speed of light. Medium. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of a cough. <clears throat> and uh, finally, italic. Okay, let's do some passes with a six millimeter nib. Right, there we go. Come back to those in a second. <clears throat> let's take a sip of tea. So what you can see here is a very dark grey, um, and that's pretty much it. I was expecting somewhat more of a metallic sheen or, or, or something, but it's, it's a fairly dark grey, which in the right nibs, for example this italic or this broad that lays down a lot of ink, a very wet line, um, 
you definitely see shading. So there's 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 shading for those the, those of you who like that. I think that will be the majority of you. Um, dries fairly quickly. This is already dry. That's a nice thing. Let's go for a second pass then while we're at it. If you hear a strange squeaky noise in the background, those are my pet rats, Eric and Dan. Okay. Let's have a look at some line variation writing. There we have it. Now it's difficult to squeeze some line variation from this nib. What you should be able to see from the true flex nib is that this gives you a very dark gray, almost blackish. Broad Every time I say the broad, I'm afraid some charming assistant female lady is going to show up and hand me my next pen, but it's it still hasn't happened so far. Okay. I think it's time for a third pass right there. Oh yeah all dry. Now that's dark. Come back to that in a second, but first the italic. So what we're getting with this triple pass thing, this one's not completely dry, but it's pretty dry, um, is a, a grey, legible, single pass. More saturated we get a darker grey, and with a highly saturated nib we would get a very, very dark grey, almost blackish. Not entirely black, but blackish, I would say. Um, so they have the, the progression in saturation. It's it's definitely grey. There's not a whole lot more I can make of that. Let's check how this ink likes water. E for Einstein. medium nib, some writing, now we have to wait a second for this to dry. In the meantime, let us do a scorecard. Cleaning. Haven't done that yet, in all honesty. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Prognosis, I would say, good. 
never had a Mont Blanc ink that was very difficult to remove apart from uh, Midnight Blue but that's an iron, iron gall ink and even that is fairly easy to clean out of pen so I'm not expecting a, a lot of issues here. Pleat through I will have to see about that. Color well I would be inclined to say a dark grey or grey if you prefer Americanized stuff. Shading that sounded like that sounded like jaws. Shading 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 ah! Okay shading I would say is good. You get some nice shading. Even in a well, I, I, you know, even in a fine nib, I would say you, you can see a little bit of shading. So that's that's good. That, let's let's make that a little bit more enthusiastic. Good to excellent, because it is quite impressive. Then we have. Then we have the flow. You see, <laughs> boopity, boopity, Where do we go? Flow. Uh, flow is good. No hard starts, no issues except the six millimeter nib, but wow, that's a, a typical one. Anyway, drying time. Well, I would say that is very good. You've seen that this stuff dries fairly quickly. Waterproofness. Well, we're going to do the eyedropper of death in a second. Plus something else, of course. Uh, and we got the feathering. We'll have to come back to that too. Okay. So, something I nearly forgot. Let me grab the bottle of ink here. And, of course, this knife, because we have to do the Tardif test. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Okay, let's leave that to dry for a second. I'll just cap the bottle. Whoops. And I'm back. Okay. So first of all, let's put some water to this. Careful I'm not ruining the Tardif test. That's a lot of water. Just saying nearly knocked over the bottle of water, or the uh, little cup of water. Little jar, I think, is the best word I'm, I, I've got for what I'm using. Okay, well here we go, the eyedropper of death. You know, whenever I hear the Marche Funèbre by Chopin, I always have to think of the time. I once had a car which was quite old, and it had to be uh, taken to uh, a car junkyard because it was... Uh, well, I, I didn't have an accident or anything, but just with the, the, the periodical checkup, it, they, they said, well, this is just... The, the car is just dying, you have to take it off. So I, 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 I took it to some, some, you know, some, some scrap heap, and I switched on the radio. I thought, let's, let's listen to the radio for the last time. And then they played the Funeral March by Chopin, played by Rachmaninoff. So that's actually a very interesting recording. And it was so fitting. I mean, I was driving to my car's funeral, and I have that music in the background. Amazing. Anyway, uh, that was a highly interesting interlude. Let's get rid of some of the water here. Well, well, well. I'm getting the same impression here. Waterproof ink. If this test is representative in any way, you can still read the writing. You can still see this. Where's my pen? Here's my pen. Waterproofness. Excellent. 
excellent. I'm reaching around a tripod, sorry, that's the, that explains the odd writing. Okay, I'll come back to this in a second. The Tardif test is extremely fascinating. I'll come back to that in a second once it's dried. But I think for now we should first have a look at some cheap copy of paper. I, I'm not um, doing a commercial for Rhodia, by the way. I'm just closing the pad so that I can put the paper on there. Should you wonder. Alright, let's do some writing. Where's my... here's my little thing. That's what she said. Anyway, here we go. Fine. That was a brilliant, brilliant artist's impression, I think, uh, of this event. This is a stellar event, you can watch it live on HBO. The Quick Brown Fox Jumps Over the oh, Trappage uh, Rue the I could have picked a shorter sentence space time continuum the quick brown fox rules that's better jumps often. There we go. That's a bad N. OBKB, let's have a look at some flex appeal. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. Let me see. Einstein, what else do I need? I need a lot. This is Einstein, should you wonder. See, he's sticking out his tongue. Um, and I need some big thing. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, I shouldn't have. Oh. This is a highly fantastic A. It should have. Uh, oh well. It, it could have been better. This is a very poor attempt at Old English. You can't even take this seriously. Doesn't matter. Just creating some patches of ink. All right. Feathering. Oh yeah. You see that? That is some serious feathering. Um, with the six millimeter nib, things seem to be okay. 
especially with the flex nib going slow, laying down a lot of ink, uh, you definitely get some, uh, some feathering. The writing itself doesn't do any feathering, so that's, that's good. Let's check out how the, uh, the bleed-through, what, what the bleed-through is like. Well, serious bleed-through with the feathered stuff, that was to be expected, I'm afraid, um, with the, the, the really big nib. With the regular nibs, it seems to be okay. You get some with the, I think this is italic, or? no, that's broad. You get some with the broad, uh, so bleed-through is not perfect in this ink, but, you know, it seems to be pretty much okay. Um, <clears throat> here we have this writing on the Rhodia paper. I don't see any bleed through. Maybe a little bit of shade through, but this is the Tardif test. Uh, no bleed through and no feathering. What I find fascinating is that I seem to understand that there is metal particles in this ink or something. Um, and uh, uh, the Tardif test seems to show us that there's something going on. Uh, this seems to be some type of, I don't know, I wouldn't call that that flaky, but some kind of gritty stuff. Maybe it's just an optical illusion. But I would say there's something going on there. And as you can see, I mean, this is grey, this is light grey, but this is black. So, this is very fascinating. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to grab a loop here. I don't think the camera is going to pick this up very well, but... Um, You see that? There's some strange reflections in there. That looks like it's reflective stuff. I'm just gonna hold this to my eye. Yeah, there's, there's definitely something going on there. So it's 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 a fascinating thing. Okay, now I've got to finish up the scorecard. Bleed through. Well, it's really dependent on the paper, but I would say it's okay to good. I mean, only in a, even in copy of paper, even with a, a you need a, 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 what do you call that? Um, a broad nib to, to really bleed through to the paper, or a lot of flex writing, and I'm assuming you won't be doing that on, on regular copy of paper a whole lot. Feathering seems to be okay to good too. Again, that's just, um, it depends a little on the paper, and depends on how much flex you do. As you see on Rhodia, the flex, there is no feathering whatsoever, so... I mean, okay, so we've we've got all that covered. Now, what I would like to show you is an ink that is a little bit like this. Did I just sound? I, I sort of had a Bill Cosby intonation there. Now, what I want to show you, you see, is another ink that looks like it. Ah. So we'll start with some. Uh, this is the. Uh, M B A Einstein Dark Grey And then I have in an Ahab just see whether that writes. Of course it doesn't. Just squeezing some ink into the feet of the camera here. There we go. Uh, what I have here is some gerbin. I guess the F doesn't really make a lot of sense, but okay. This is gerbin cacao du Brésil. Hmm. Well, well, well. What would you say? Does the, those two inks resemble each other a little bit? So if if the Einstein is a bit too much for your wallet and you would like something that's a bit more affordable, um, I think Cacao de Brazil is an excellent alternative, with all due respect. Um, and 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 that's pretty much all there's to it. So here we have it. I mean, I'm not saying this is not a nice ink, because it is a nice ink, 
It has very nice shading. Uh, I think a little bit more than Cacao de Brazil, in, especially in, in finer nids. Um, flows well, is waterproof. I, I'm not sure about the Cacao de Brazil's waterproofness. So, if that really matters to you, then uh, uh, maybe you should get that one. Or should not get that one. Um, and, and that's all there's to it. So, Mont Blanc, Albert Einstein. Mont Blanc, I didn't say the K, I hope. Uh, Albert Einstein, limited edition ink, ink encyclopedia entry. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye.